New World. What in the goddamn? My God, I know. Two New World videos in a row? It must be the end times. But seriously, fresh start servers are coming harder and faster than greatsword users all over those now obsolete hatchet DPS users. And now I'm not about to go and leave your sweaty little min-maxing fingers out of the picture with nothing to do. So let's do our best to optimize the fun right out of this new experience and turn you into a power leveler. Now, assuming that I'm not too late to the party, like always, fresh start servers have just popped into existence not too long ago. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do after opening the game is, you know, just click that button over there. I know it's pretty complex, but stay with me here. Now you're gonna be thrown into the intro cinematic. Oh, wow, it's incredible. Look at the detail and skip. Once you've done that, you're gonna be dumped into character design. And this is about the time that you wanna spend. No, what, what did I say? What did I say? I said, no fun. You pick whatever abomination that Amazon gave you from the randomizer and you just click play. You don't even bother with the screen, okay? We don't have time for fun here. We're min-maxing right now. Next, you're gonna hit the tutorial. And what you're gonna wanna do is hit escape as quickly as you can, go up to this top little menu over here and skip this part of the game too. What's that you had to say about learning to play the game? Well, you should have thought of that before clicking on this video. Here's what you need to know. WASD movement, left click attack, right click block or aim. You got three buttons for abilities for your weapons as you gain them over time, and the other number buttons are for consumables. There, tutorial over. Now, once you've hit one of the two beaches of Normandy, you're gonna find yourself in this area amongst a bunch of players fighting over the rocks and sticks on the ground. You gotta get stuck into that too. What I want you to do is get a hold of five pieces of flint and four long, hard pieces of green wood that you've dug out of your nearest bush. So next, you're gonna talk to that quest giver on the beach, craft all of your tools and not just the skinning knife, and then you're gonna go back to this bastard. Because after you talk to them a second time, you're gonna need to kill a ball. If you do it before, it's not gonna count. Once you've done that, skin its corpse like you're a character from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and go cook some of that delicious long pork. Now, optimizing this little beginning part might not seem like much, but it'll stack over time, as you'll see. It's usually enough to put you ahead of maybe 95% of all the players who are still on the beaches fighting over rocks. So now ahead, you can go ahead and follow the main story quest line, or the MSQ for short. Keep in mind that New World doesn't really function the same way other MMOs do. There's no point in going out of your way to kill extra mobs. Most mobs in this game are barely worth any XP and it's quite literally faster to level by gathering and picking up all these little blue notes that you're gonna find out in the wilds. I suggest you do both whenever possible, but your main focus is the main story quest line. Playing the game actually gets you leveling the fastest. Big shocker, I know. Don't worry too much about looting chests and just focus on outpacing as many people as you can because when it comes to kill quests later, you're gonna be the one who's there first, not waiting around for 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever the respawn timer is for whatever elite mob you've gotta kill next. At some point, the MSQ is gonna want you to go into a settlement, but before you do, you're gonna have to turn your brain back on quickly and pick up 41 wood, 40 stone, and 16 rawhide leather. This is both for the main crafting tutorial quest that you're gonna find in the settlement that you're heading to, and the later learn how to be a hobo out in the woods quest that you're gonna do. Keep in mind, the sooner you prep for this stuff, the less back and forth running you're gonna be doing later. Another good tip is that you're gonna run into hapless Howl. Pick up his quest and do it, assuming that players aren't already flooding into the area and you are just incapable of picking up the resources you need. If not, skip it. I promise you'll be fine. This kind of goes for any secondary quest that you might be doing out in the world. If you see a nearby Californian tent city popping up out of nowhere, it's probably best to just leave it alone and carry on and just focus on the MSQ and whatever secondary quest that lies right next to it. Another thing to remember is that if you're waiting around for non-critical resources to spawn, it is quicker to go find another place where people aren't than to wait around staring at the ground where the resource was, waiting for it to pop back into existence. All you're really doing is wasting valuable time that you could be using somewhere else to ruin the game experience. And you don't wanna do that now, do you? So while you're following that main story quest line, here's some hints to make it go by a little bit faster. Whenever possible, always follow the roads. You get a speed buff on your character, and the only thing you're gonna go out of your way to pick up is all the fast travel points because you're usually gonna be bouncing between them and the town you were in. And speaking of the town you were in, always make sure that whatever settlement you are based out of 
that you've talked to the innkeeper and that you've set this place as your home. Because if you can teleport instead of taking the Shoelace Express, life gets infinitely easier. Just about now, when you've picked up the main story quest line, you're running around finding those fast travel points, bouncing back to the settlement. This is the point where things started to get just a little bit derailed. Now you should be making pretty good leveling progress at this point, but because there's so many different paths to follow, there's plenty that you can do or maybe should do instead of just doing one thing, depending on the state that your current world is in. I know this is a novel concept, but other players in an MMO affect the world around you and affect how things happen. So to counter this and to try and give you the best advice possible without lying to your face, we gotta get a little bit more general about what we're doing now. First, at least at the lower levels, what you wanna do is refine those materials and craft yourself a new set of gathering tools at the highest level you can manage at whatever point in time you can. What makes this a little bit easier is you should have some leftover iron from that one tutorial crafting quest that you did earlier. The reason you're doing this is because the better you're gathering tools, the faster you can gather materials out in the world. That tiny little increment of time of gathering out in the world, which actually gives you a fairly decent amount of XP, does stack between one and 60 if done right. So gather as much as you can, throw it into storage, and don't think about it until you stack to the tits on materials. Once you are sufficiently stacked, what you'll wanna do is go to your nearest refining station, refine everything in a gigantic batch, and maybe craft it if you want that XP too. The warning here is that if you do this in smaller batches, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time just running back and forth between different stations. If you can do it all at once, it's far more valuable XP because it doesn't take as much time. The one exception to this crafting rule is probably cooking. What you'll wanna do is ensure that you've always got enough food in your bag to keep up a food buff. It just makes combat that much easier. And if you die, that's a big loss in time. Third, you'll wanna keep light armor on whenever possible. It just makes it easier to move around the world faster and that dodge roll can really put you ahead of things more than you actually think. Fourth, and this is gonna be a controversial one, pick up town faction board quests, but only the ones that align with wherever you're heading for the MSQ. The XP you get from one of these things has been heavily nerfed, so it's near pointless to even think about focusing on them. And fifth, if you can, fake your death so no one bothers you while you play. Now, at some point following the MSQ, you're gonna hit level 17. This is the point in time to make a decision. Now, if you want that extra 10% XP buff for having your PVP on, now is the time to run all the way to Everfall. You're gonna find three faction quests here. One for the Covenant, one for the Marauders, and one for the Purple Bird Furries. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which faction to join, at least not here. Somehow this guide is surprisingly still relevant. But what I am gonna tell you is that there's some really decent gear that you can get out of doing these quests, at least to some degree. If you need a musket and dex and int gear, go syndicate. The Marauder one for the Great Axe and Covenant if you want that life staff. Though with that being said, I suggest you at least do the intro quests that get you the green gear, because most of it has constitution on, and the Marauder one in particular gives you a very nice ring that's at least a decent boost in health. Now these recommendations for PVP do come with a warning. Flagging for PVP and getting that 10% XP bonus only actually slows you down if you keep on getting targeted and turned into an unwilling gangbang participant. So I leave this part up to you. Use it or ignore it at your own risk. Now all of this is pretty nice, comfortable, it'll probably speed you up quite a lot but things change if you're not soloing this experience. Then it becomes worthwhile to focus on doing most of the side quests instead of ignoring them completely. And if you're using the group method, you're probably gonna wanna make sure that one of your group members is musically inclined because all that playing on his flesh flute is gonna give your whole group a buff. Make sure they work up that music skill to at least level 25 because the buff they get from playing music, group share XP, really nice. And congratulations, at this point, you're probably more than 33% of the way to max level. The game's gonna open up to you and you're probably gonna keep following that MSQ, but if you ever fall behind on levels, the most optimal and consistent way of getting XP is probably gonna be the side quests. Killing mobs in this game is great for weapon XP, but it's not so great for leveling this little bar that sits at the bottom of your screen. Other than that, try to keep up with your crafting, but don't focus on it too much. If you're not, and you're just looking to use the gathering XP, 
Wait a little while and you'll probably see someone who's just hyper-focused down on engineering and they'll be able to get you the best tools that you need. The only thing you'll really need to do is just go to a trading post. And finally, whatever weapons you decide to use with your character, stick to them. You'll want to make sure that you've got them at the highest level possible so that you can kill at a high speed and move on. Now go my child, off into the wild corrupted yonder that is the server queue that you have to wait through before you can play the game. When you get in there, I want you to ruin that gaming experience for yourself. I want you sitting there flexing on all those noobs who made that dumbass decision to enjoy their in-game time instead of just no lifing it to 60. And when you're there standing at the peak with only a few others at max level, waiting for everyone else to catch up to you, and that sinking pit in your stomach telling you that you just missed out on something between levels one and 60, I want you to remember that you were the best even if no one cares. As for me, however, well, despite my best efforts to not be a hype monkey for New World, I'm part of the Return to Eternum event. And you should probably know what that means if I just released this video. I need to go ahead and ruin the fun of the new experience for myself too. So uh, if you're interested in watching me try to be one of the first, if not the first on my server, you'll find me on Twitch right about, uh, right about now. I'm gonna be live executing on the strat with just a few extra modifications. So I'll see you there. Oh yes, and last thing to know, I'm pretty sure that I don't know everything, so there's likely something in here that's missing that you might know that I don't. And if that's the case, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below, or come yell at me on Twitch that my plan is stupid. You might even get a few unique in-game skins out of it. So as always, a big thank to my subscribers, both old and new. All right, good night, bro. And a special thank to those champions who went ahead and min-maxed my Patreon, who this time around not only get to watch this video early, but get my bullet point cheat sheet so they can do it themselves if they want. So more content soon. Bye. Oh.